meningitis is an infection of the protective membranes covering the brain and spinal cord. The condition can be caused by a viral, fungal, or bacterial infection. Bacterial meningitis is caused by a number of different types of bacteria, many of which are commonly found in the environment and even with people without causing the host harm. Bacterial meningitis is usually severe, and while most people recover, it can cause serious complications such as brain damage, hearing loss, or learning disabilities. In the United States, approximately 500 deaths occur each year due to the condition. There are several types of bacteria that cause bacterial meningitis. In the United States, the leading causes include Haemophilus influenzae, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Group B Streptococcus, Listeria monocytogenes, E. coli, and Neisseria meningitis. Some of these bacteria can be contagious and be spread to other people. This usually happens when there is close or long contact with a sick person or due to direct contact with a sick person's oral secretions. Unlike most causes of bacterial meningitis, you can get Listeria monocytogenes by eating contaminated food. There are also factors that can increase one's risk of developing bacterial meningitis. They include age. Infants are at a higher risk for bacterial meningitis than people in other age groups. However, people of any age are at risk community settings. Infectious diseases tend to spread more quickly where larger groups of people gather together. Medical conditions. There are certain diseases, medications, and surgical procedures that may weaken the immune system or increase the risk of meningitis. And travel. Travelers to certain regions of the globe may be at higher risk of developing the condition. Bacterial meningitis can usually be treated effectively with antibiotics with early treatment. These are just a few things to know about bacterial meningitis. To learn more about microbial pathogens or other health and safety, occupational, or indoor air quality issues, please visit the website shown on the screen. IAQ TV, the place to be. This is a really easy case, but we'll do it anyway. Notice here's the brain. Notice these delicate little uh, membranes here are the arachnoid mater. Notice that the meninges are very cloudy along here and appear to have a thick, perhaps almost a pus-like exudate. Uh, actually, it is a pus-like exudate. This is swelling of the cloudy swelling of the meninges due to acute inflammation of the meninges, otherwise known as 
meningitis. I'm going to go out on a limb here just to make your life a little bit simple. Whereas most primary inflammations of the brain proper, primarily limited to the brain, are caused by viruses, most of the inflammations of the meninges are primarily limited to the meninges are caused by bacteria. Now, meningitis can extend into the brain and cephalitis can extend into the meninges. And if you did, perhaps you would like to use the word meningoencephalitis to uh, really notify, uh, show that really both areas are involved. But in this particular case, the brain is relatively normal and it's just the meninges that uh, are very, very much inflamed. They are inflamed because they have these little collections of neutrophils all throughout the meninges. Here's a solid little ball of uh, leukocytes. All of these are leukocytes. This is why the brain looked like pus and uh, the meninges were thickened and cloudy. If this was a uh, child less than two years old, perhaps Haemophilus would be the first bacteria on your mind. If this was part of an epidemic, you might expect Neisseria as being the bacteria involved. And of course, in older people, some of the other gram-negative uh, bacteria would be a cause of meningitis. But just to, as a general rule, most meningitis is bacterial cause. Do a lumbar puncture and you'll probably be able to figure out what it is if it's not apparent already. Thank you very much. Okay, let's say a few general words about uh, inflammations of the brain and meninges, and then we'll show some of the classic uh, features of inflammations of the brain, otherwise known as encephalitis. Uh, as you can see from this view already, the substance here that we're looking at is brain. And at the periphery of it, you see a loose membranous and vascularized area, which is meninges. Most primary inflammations of the brain are viral caused. Most primary inflammation of the meninges are bacterial caused. The uh, definition of encephalitis, theoretically, is inflammation of the brain, so it's allowed to have an increase in number of inflammatory cells and glial cells as part of its general uh, pattern of inflammation. However, uh, the hallmark feature, and at least a common finding, is that in early or even in not early encephalitis, the primary focus of inflammatory cells seems to be distributed around the blood vessels. And here is a little uh, couple of arrows in which you could see uh, blood vessels, one here in the meninges and one here in the brain and another here in the brain. And if you zoom in a little bit better on these areas, you could see that they are blood vessels in which there is a uh, peripheral cuffing of inflammatory cells, chiefly lymphocytes. Perivascular intracerebral blood vessel cuffing is the classic hallmark feature of an encephalitis, and uh, specifically usually of a viral encephalitis, no matter what the virus is. Uh, not to say that there aren't other patterns, but this is the most common one. And what I want to do now is go to another area in which this same pattern is even more pronounced. Here's another blood vessel, and here's a whole bunch of lymphocytes surrounding it. There is a potential or at least theoretical space surrounding the intracerebral blood vessels called the Virchow, as in Rudy Virchow, Robbins, as in Stanley Robbins, space. And the Virchow Robbins space in encephalitis becomes uh, engorged with lymphocytes. But you'll also note that in the areas of the brain which uh, are not, in which you do not see too many prominent vessels, there may be of an increase of glial and inflammatory uh, lymphocytic cells there as well. Now let's look at the meninges and say another general thing. 
Well, here's a meningeal vessel. And you could see in the meningeal vessel, there seems to be a little cuffing of uh, lymphocytes as well. So uh, let's just say that if a encephalitis also involves the meninges or a meningitis also involves the brain, probably the preferred term for this would be a meningoencephalitis. But remember, generally, in encephalitis, the primary focus is in the brain. In meningitis, the primary focus is in the meninges. And I think that's all that I want to say. So once again, thank you very much.